Hey dolls, Ali Akub here and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys a story on how I was stabbed with the comb. It's going to be a little emotional for me because I haven't really, I speak about it but I don't speak about it. I kind of recently just let it be how it is but I might as well share my story. While I'm sharing my story I'm just going to be doing my makeup so I have no excuse to cry because my makeup's going to be done. But let's just jump right into today's video. have anxiety and I haven't even said anything I was at my store and I'm not gonna say what my store is but I'm just gonna say it's more towards the hood where I'm from so it's a little bit of a bad area there's, there's a lot of things that happen around that area I hear shootings from time to time it's nothing I can't handle but until the moment it happened to me and I was working by myself that day it was on July 5th and it was on a Sunday and usually Sundays at my store are pretty slow as it is and like July 4th just happened it was really busy that day so like I expect the next day to be pretty slow before I keep on talking I'm just gonna take this yellow from my color board palette and then I'm just gonna go ahead and apply that in my crease but I expected it to be a pretty slow day and it was the video of me like running after her I'll see if I'm gonna put that in the video or not I have no idea yet I don't know as I expected I just expected Sundays to be a slow day you know day after 4th of July it's gonna be pretty slow and it was it really was you know I only had a couple people you know in and out buying small things until this one customer came and at first you know she was really sweet like she seemed pretty nice and she seemed about my age at first like she seemed she was about and at that time I was what, 19 years old seemed to be about my age so I didn't really expect anything from her like I always watch my customers regardless like even if I've known them for like 10 years I always have to watch my customers just anything could happen you know it's just like on my phone watching her because I have the cameras in front of me they're on the tv so I can watch them and I was just like on my phone I, think I was like messaging somebody back before I keep going I'm just gonna go into this James Charles and grab that hot pink that he has sooner or later she comes to the front and she puts some of her braiding hair down she had like maybe one or two packs of braiding hair and then she goes by the lip glosses and grabs maybe like six or seven lip glosses let me get some of my eyeshadow done and then I'm gonna explain a little bit more as I was saying she grabbed a couple lip glosses she says everything on the counter at first it's not even three seconds after she had it on the counter and then she's looking at these eyelashes hair she grabs the braiding hair and her lip glosses she grabs herself looks at the eyelashes again and then she's like I'm not going anywhere like don't worry I'm not going anywhere and in my opinion if you say you're not going anywhere you just look like you seem hella suspicious so like I just immediately knew like something was gonna happen I just knew and I'm gonna explain a little bit more how I knew I'm gonna take this purple into the James Charles and then start deepening up my outer edge but you know she keeps saying you know I'm not gonna go anywhere I'm not gonna go anywhere and this mind this she sounded so sweet like she seemed like a very sweet person so I didn't think of anything of it but like I knew in my heart something was gonna happen and that day that whole day I just had like the worst feeling I had such a bad feeling about that day and I know when I have a bad feeling that something's gonna happen something is going to happen so she takes off with all of the stuff after her hand and the dumbass that I am chases after her and I leave my knife on the counter and that still haunts me till this day I'll think about it and have to like shake myself to stop thinking about it because I can't because I'll spiral but I left my knife on the counter and I always think about how the situation would be different if I thought two seconds to bring my knife. But no, I chased after her. One of my shoes ended up fall, like flying off while I chased after her and I'm like yelling at her and I was like, you're not gonna get away. Like I'm a very fast runner. Right across from my store, like literally only like 10 steps away is a restaurant. And then there's an alleyway on the back and then there's houses on the side. Um, as I'm running towards her, there's this also this guy that's like waiting for her and he's on the corner 
and he sees everything like he didn't care what I didn't know is that she picked up also a rat tail comb and if you don't know what a rat tail comb is a fine tooth comb but with a metal pick at its end and it's pointy at the bottom I catch up to her and she grabs the comb and she's like stop like she was like, like, stop like trying to threaten me with the comb. I was like, regardless, like you're gonna end up going to jail. Like I told her that straight up. I was like, whatever you plan to do, you're gonna go to jail. She throws the stuff on the ground, throws everything. And then I decided to bend over and pick up whatever she had. Like I grabbed all the lip glosses and I grabbed the braiding hair. And then as I'm bent over, she takes the comb and goes, pa 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 my back um as i was saying i bent over and then i was grabbing the things and she went ba, 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 on my back and i felt maybe like it was about like four probably four stabs but and then she grabs like the braiding hair out of my hand and she walks away with that guy that was standing there and i walk all the way back to my store i immediately felt like my back was in so much pain like it was immediate and I go into the store and I call the owner of like the store that's next to me that's connected. And I you know I tell him what happened and he comes in, he's like all worried and this and this and that. And I call my mom and I tell her everything what happened and then all I hear is that like, do you want to call an ambulance? Like, are you fine? Like, or do you want to call an ambulance? And I'm like, bro, no, I just want to go home. Like, I was just like, I was just telling my mom, I was like, can I just leave and go home? And then maybe it was not even like three to four minutes of me sitting down in the chair and I couldn't, like, I genuinely couldn't move my back. I was in so much pain. And I felt like I couldn't breathe. Immediately, like, a couple minutes. About a couple minutes into it, I started coughing up blood and I spit it into my sleeve. Because I didn't know what, like, I couldn't find anything. And I was coughing up a lot of blood. And then I tell him, like, the owner, and I'm just like, Yeah, I think you're going to need to call that ambulance. I lied, let me finish up my lids and then I'm gonna explain the story. I'm gonna go into this like bluish color because Lily told me to and put that all over my lid. Hello. I'm keeping that in. So ambulance and cops come. I, mean, it was, I know there was like four paramedics, at least four cops. There was a whole bunch of people and I was just like, damn, I was like, all these people just for me. I kind of felt a little special, but. What about your concealer? Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I never do foundation. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, Layla. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. Yeah, I was like, all these people for me, I was like, I feel like a little bit special. So they sent me down, like, literally, like, in the middle of the store, like, by the front door. And then I remember customers trying to get in, and they were just like, well, we're closed now. Like, y'all gotta go come back another day. And what you gonna call it they kept asking me a whole bunch of questions and like the owner next door he has like bad english and he was trying to explain what happened and i'm over here just like sitting and i was just like boy this guy doesn't know what he's talking about so i have to interrupt i was just like let me explain what happened so i told like the cops and the paramedics what happened they checked my back and they said they saw like two little dots they look like freaking they look like vampire dots i always think about that they do look like vampire dots um and they said, oh, it's like, it didn't even go through, so like, they're wondering how I'm spitting up blood. And they kept asking me if I bit my tongue. And I said, no, I think I would remember if I bit my tongue. I kept saying that, I was like, I did not, they asked me about like five times if I bit my tongue, and I said, no, I would remember if I bit my tongue. Because and then I had to go in an ambulance, and I didn't, well, that was my first time in an ambulance, I think, by myself. Um, I was just like, I was like, all right, this is pretty cool. I was like, I'm in an ambulance. I was like, now I feel like one of the special people that are on the road and they're moving for me. <laughs> but you know, the paramedic that I had to talk to was just asking me like the same questions. Like, and he was just like, I don't think anything happened. Like, I think they're just gonna send you home today. I remember even in the ambulance too, I was just like, bro, do you have something I could spit in? Cause I kept coughing up blood and he had me gauze. And I was just like, okay. I was like, thank you, but it'll work. Cause I kept spitting up. And then, you know, we got to the hospital. I told, they put me in a wheelchair right away. I had to talk to a couple of nurses. And I was sitting in the um, lobby room for, I think, like two hours. Like, Methodist Hospital needs to step up their game. Because and I was, while I was waiting, I remember this like, one guy coming out of one of those doors. And he, like, sat there and he was in a wheelchair. And then he asked the nurse, and he was like, hey, when am I going to get a room? And I told him, 
Um, the nurse told him, like, hey, I remember you. You just came in, like, two minutes ago. You're going to have to wait like everybody else. And I was, like, dying a lot. And I was, like, shit. I didn't even have a mask on. I didn't have nothing with me besides, like, my purse. My phone was going to die. My phone died while I was waiting for a room. And then eventually I got to a room, I think, around maybe 5 o'clock. Because I remember getting to the hospital at, like, 3 and I remember like calling, I called you first. I called Layla first before I even called my dad. I told her that I got stabbed. I called her first, then my other family members. My mom already knew, but like I called Layla out of everybody. I was just like, well, Layla's gonna know soon. Cause I texted her, I was going to the hospital and I was just like, got stabbed, like I'll talk to you later. See, this is like so much better that you're here so I'm not feeling like as anxious. And I like feel a little, a little bit better talking about it and I can make more of a joke out of it than it's so serious it really was. I had to stay there for a little while until someone came in to give me an x-ray. I remember it was maybe like 6 or 7, 8 o'clock. It was pretty late in the day when I had to go to, like it was probably like 6 or 7 where I had to go get an, um, an x-ray. And they said the x-ray didn't show anything so I had to go get a CT and I had to wait a couple hours for a CT and then the owner came back. To the hospital and he took my phone you know went to go charge it i was so happy because my phone was dead i had nothing on me because i remember my charger breaking that day too it was so sad i had nothing my phone was dead i had to watch spongebob i watched 90 day fiance i watched anything that i could find on tv pretty much but sooner or later i got my ct and then when they say whatever they inject you with feels like you're gonna pee it, it's gonna feel like you're gonna pee. It just feels don't, like you're peeing yourself. Right, like just, just don't pee. <laughs> Literally. That's what my nurse told me. She's like, it's gonna make you feel like you're gonna pee or get you're gonna get really hot. Just don't pee on yourself. And I was like, and I asked her, I was like, have people done that before? She's like, you don't want to know how many times I've had people. That's do what my nurse said. <laughs> I was like, I was like, God damn. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, okay. Got my C team. And then waited a little bit and then my, I, I just had this one doctor come in and then she told me that my lung collapsed and that I have a pneumothorax. I remember they said they were going to give me some medication, a breathing exercise, and then I had to be on an oxygen mask for at least 24 hours. And then I remember my mom coming and my stepdad coming in and they brought me food and I was so happy because I haven't eaten all day and I ate the hell out of that food. They got me some Arabian food. And I was just, you know, just chilling in pain. I was in so much pain. And if you've ever had a collapsed lung, you know what a collapsed lung feels like. It feels like you can't breathe. And like with my lung, it was my left lung. And I feel like my lung could only like inflate like the tiniest bit. And then it would inflate back at like it just hurt to move, to walk, to breathe, to talk. I was like, mm -mm. I was just not having it, honestly. And then I think it was around maybe one in the morning where I actually got set into my room and i was so tired and i was just like i'm trying to go to sleep couldn't go to sleep i was in so much pain because laying down literally felt my like feel worse i had to ask a good nurse for extra pillows just because i couldn't genuinely like lay down and i don't i don't know why it just made it feel worse it just it really did and then i didn't go to sleep until maybe like four four in the morning and and then i remember waking up at like six in the morning because there was like a nurse in my room and she was just like well are you up do you want to take your seat uh not your ct your uh x-ray and i was just like i guess so i you know i had to get in a wheelchair i was like i was up so i might as well I had to get in a wheelchair actually that day on monday i was able to go home they said my hole was like closing in so i really didn't have to stay in there much longer and I was happy so I didn't have to like fully get admitted into the hospital. Came home, my brother made me some mac and cheese. After I ate mac and cheese, I took my medication and I literally slept. It was like 7 p.m. I slept until... Well, actually... <laughs> I slept at 7 p.m. and then my dad wakes me up at 6 in the morning and I was in so much pain because he was asking about his car. I had to get up to go to my brother. I was just overall pissed. Then I went to my bed. Slept in until like 11 o'clock and those pills that I had to take, I had to take my narco pills every four hours and then the other ones I had to take three times a day. So like I was in and out of sleep just to take medication. 
but really like the first week and a half of my recovery I really don't remember I have some funny videos that I might put in but <laughs> um, I really don't remember because I was just sleeping the whole time like that's all I could do was just sleep eat go to the bathroom and just be back in my bed do was really just get up to go to the bathroom and then I couldn't sleep on my left side because that's where I got stabbed so I had to sleep I had to sleep on the right side of my body so there was like an indent literally in my bed but I was in recovery for about a month or so okay like a, like a month and a half like two months really and then it was still hard for me to like move around and do things that I could do it till this day it's still hard for me to move my left shoulder so if I work it too much I'll be like in the worst pain I remember when I first started working again I couldn't get on a two-step ladder without being out of breath sometimes I still get like that I'll go up the stairs and I'll be completely out of breath but I learned my lesson. I'm sorry. She no. is. <laughs> Girl, I'm trying to be all serious. Like, I'm just <laughs> Take the whole damn palette. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, and they're pretty. <gasps> Anywho, when I started working, I couldn't really work as much as I wanted to. I only could work like a couple hours throughout the day. And I worked at my mom's store, so I wouldn't go back to the other store. But. I don't know, it was, I learned my lesson of not chasing after customers because God knows what would happen. And one, the one thing I was talking about earlier is how I said like I already felt like something bad was going to happen. I've always had a feeling that I was going to get attacked by a customer and be in the hospital. Like I've always had this vision that I was going to end up in the hospital because a customer did something to me. And that's why I kind of was like not as phased by it when it happened and I was just kind of like going through the moment because I just I already knew this was gonna happen to me so I wasn't freaked out I just in my heart I just I just knew but honestly it was a life learned lesson um there's nothing I can really do about it now in my opinion and then with the girl she was actually about like 16 years old something like that she was in the foster care system and I have like my detective on it they pretty sure I had to call him to make sure he found her but it's been a long case I had to go to the detective's office to go look at a lineup of these couple of pictures talk to my detective a couple of times I knew you're gonna need it getting stabbed was probably one of the scariest moments of my life I could say and you know not every day someone comes up to you and says hey I got stabbed with a comb like that is that's a story for the books but there's nothing you know I could do about it now personally I can only just move on from it and that's what I did I'm working back at that store again but I'm taking precaution now I have my knives Z. <laughs> I have a taser now I'm not gonna be chasing after any more customers but it was scary and I don't know how my friends and family felt how I was stabbed. I know my mom was scared. How did you feel? Get your input on that. I don't know. Like, I don't, um, I feel what other people feel. So like, even before it happened, like my shoulder started hurting and I already have like nerve problems mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I kind of figured it was that. But then after you told me, I was like, wait, what? Right. Like, cause it was just like, like a sharp pain going through mm -hmm. my shoulder. And, um, you told me and like the same thing like your mom like I was like scared for you but I wasn't like it wasn't like a fear that took over my whole body mm -hmm. it was more like I could, uh, I knew you were going to be okay but like I could feel the pain that you were going through so it like it hurt you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like literally that's how my back felt my back was just like in a constant like stinging pain like it literally just felt like someone was like pulling at my nerves like ever so slightly just like just pulling it back like that's just genuinely how i felt like my nerves were to be it just it was hard and it was a hard recovery i remember the first time i took a shower it was like the hardest shower that i have took i literally sat on the floor one hand <laughs> but there's so much more i can say about my recovery <coughs> and everything that i went through in that like two months type of span but What's done is done and the most I can do for it is move on and I feel like explaining the story and actually saying it out loud again is helping me move on from that fact and moving past it and like trying to like move forward at least. But not a day goes by where I don't think about it. 
not a day. That does conclude everything for today's video. Thank you for just sticking in and hearing my story of how I was stabbed with the comb. It's, it's a crazy one and it's one for the books. I hope you learned my lesson of just not chasing after customers if they stole something. But that concludes everything. If you guys want to follow me behind the scenes, my social media will be linked down below. But that concludes everything, guys. So have a blessed day. What did you put on that? What is that? Please tell me it's highlighter. It is. Okay. <laughs> Bye.